that's the one thing. I love eating Korean food, but I will full on true confessions right now. I can't cook Korean food very well. That's why we see you here so often. That's right. This yeah. is why I'd rather have you cook for me. <laughs> um, you're going to show me how to make mandu. Yes. And mandu to me is a quintessential Korean dish. For those people who don't know what mandu is, tell us. So mandu means dumpling in Korean, and what makes mandu mandu as opposed to you know other forms of dumplings, maybe Chinese dumplings or Japanese gyoza, uh, are a few things. Uh, number one is the filling. So the filling is not as emulsified as let's say a Chinese dumpling, mm -hmm. um, and it's also the pleats. So for instance, what we're going to do today, what we're going to attempt to do today. Uh, the traditional mandu fold, which is a uh, crescent-shaped pleated uh, dumpling. And it's not just for aesthetics, uh, so also the pleats catch some of the sauce. So when you're yes. taking a bite, you can get some of that, you know, soy, sugar, vinegar, scallion, sesame seeds, you know, within each bite. What's in your mandu filling? So what we're going to do today, this is um, the anju mandu. So what we have here is a ground pork and uh, buttered kimchi filling, mm -hmm. and everything is kind of whipped together with some scallions, uh, sesame seeds, you know, sesame oil, yep. um, so aromatics, ginger, garlic, just to give us some more flavor. Um, and then we have our wrappers here. Yeah. Um, so another important point is you always want to keep the wrappers covered, um, otherwise they dry out yeah. as you're going, depending on how fast or slow you are. Um, All right. And we have a little bit of water here to help seal. Yep. And what's really important is that whenever you're making dumplings, especially a meat uh, dumpling, uh, you want to have it on ice uh, so that the filling doesn't go bad as you're making because it takes a while. All right. So again, there are multiple ways to do this. What I like to do first is to seal. Oh, you so do just, the water first. Yes, yeah, so I go all the way around. I go all the way around. Next, you just want to kind of use your spoon. Like how much are you putting in there? Is that too? That's too little. Is this putting too in, much? Nope. That's that seems about okay. perfect. All right. So now another important part is to kind of shape it just gently. Oh, okay. I always want to make it look like a football. Okay. All right. So the first step is you want to hold it with your ring finger okay. as the base. Okay. Right. Mhm. Mm and then your uh, oh gosh, middle my finger. Nails are so bad. Your middle <laughs> finger and thumb are on each side, right? Just kind of holding it up. And then your okay. index finger is just kind of holding the far stem. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I got it. And okay. you're not going to put any pressure with this hand, basically. Okay. So you're going to pinch This end? This end. Okay. Right? And then as you're holding that down, mm -hmm. you push in with your left hand into your right index finger. And you can see that pleat form. Are you doing with your, your pointer finger? Yeah. So my index finger, my right hand, is pretty much doing the majority of the work. <laughs> this is so. This is embarrassing. Uh, my mother would be so embarrassed that oh, I'm trying no, to get it. Oh no, you're actually. That's looking great. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. My mom would say that this is is her fault because Honestly, she's an excellent cook. Honestly, I have taught so many people how to do this, you know, for their first time, and this is impressive. Okay. Oh. I'm not just saying that. I think I really do. Okay. You know what? Then my mother would be proud. Yeah. No, okay. that's that's Can really impressive. Can you tell impressive. my mom that I did okay? <laughs> She's doing a really good job. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this, Tanil. I did it. I mean, there are a little, a few little cracks, but not bad, right? Yeah. This is the best part because we cook it and then eat it. Yeah. And we're doing kunmandu. We are. Which we is are. what? Well, basically pan fried dumplings. Which is the best way to eat them in my book. Yep. If and you need mandu, you want to eat it on this way. And what I want to do is show you and uh, everyone watching um, an easy way to take, well, cook a dumpling from raw if you don't have steamer baskets or don't have a double boiler. None you know, all you need is a nonstick pan uh, and a cover and you're good to go. Okay. So we have a pan on uh, medium high heat. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a little bit of oil in. Okay. It's just neutral oil. Mm -hmm. uh, using a nonstick pan is critical for this. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to yep. rip the skin. And then you just want to start them off a little bit of oil, okay. bottom side down. You can check. Oh, All right, okay, we're good. And now you kind of want to remove it from heat oh. and then pour water. A little bit more. 
about a quarter cup of water. Oh. And then you're going to cover and place back on the heat. And what that's going to do is going to steam and cook the dumpling. And this will take roughly about three minutes or so, depending on the size of your dumpling. And so enough water in there, though. Yep, yeah, so you, want, you don't want to put too much water because it's just going to make them too soggy. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to put enough water to, you know, definitely cover the whole base of the pan. Okay. And what you're doing is uh, you're letting the dumpling steam up and cook. Uh, and then as we remove the lid afterwards, you're going to have the water evaporate and then the dumpling's done. That's very easy. Yeah, yes. super easy to do at home. And do you flip them or anything like that? No, you just oh, leave them like this. Okay. I mean, you can afterwards if you want to crisp every side. For me, I like to have different textures within yeah. one dumpling. So you have a really crispy bottom, and then you have this really nice kind of soft, chewy skin yes, on the other two yeah. sides, mm -hmm. right? And there's a reason why I removed it from the flame when I added the water. Uh, because when you have oil and water mixed together, yeah. especially over high heat, uh, if a little bit of that moisture comes on the side, you're going to have a flame, oh. uh, which number one is a little bit dangerous, but yep. also it ruins the oil and you can get like all these kind of black charred spots oh, around okay. the dumplings. So you always want to remove it from heat, add the water, put it back on. Perfect. All Ooh, right. they look so good. They're going to be burning hot, so I have to wait a minute before I can try them. So remind me what goes into your sauce. All right, so we have a mixture of soy sauce, uh, some vinegar, sugar, and a little bit of a... Uh, Korean vegetable sock made out of kombu, which is a oh, dried yeah. seaweed labor. Can you make that here? Yep, and uh, shiitake mushrooms. Ooh. And we have some chopped scallions and toasted sesame seeds. Hold on. This is what I was referring to earlier about the pleats catching yes, the sauce. Yes, yes. So it serves a function. Well, yours definitely look better than mine, but the good <laughs> thing is in the end, they taste the same. Yeah, and they all right? look great. These are very good. Good work. Thank you, Chef Daniel Lee. Thanks so much. All right, My thank mom you. would be proud. And Enjoy. I hope yours would too. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I, I hope so too. Remember the chef was saying the pleats catch the sauce. You see the sesame seeds and the scallion. I use chopped it because that's what I do. But you don't have to because it's a little slippery. Mm. Oh. It's perfect. It's the right amount of meat to wrapper ratio. You can taste all the yummy filling parts of it. The garlic, you have to have garlic in Korean food. And it just makes me think of home. Mmm.